Good morning, church, and welcome to another Lighthouse podcast. Let's open up in prayer. Father God, we, we thank you for your word that's it's living and it's active and it, and it, it works to, to separate the, the, the joints and the marrow of our life, that it wouldn't um, harm or hurt anything that, that is necessary, but it would, it would cut away those things that, that are unnecessary and harmful. So we, as we look at this passage today, Lord, um, thank you for ministering to us through it. And may we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week in our podcast, we we saw the contrast between those who are enemies of the cross and of those who have their citizenship in heaven. We looked at it in terms of, of a choice. So we can choose to satisfy our flesh or submit to God's providence and uh, protection. And so we know that our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. This is how God has provided for us um, to live for him. So today in chapter 4, we'll look at verses 1 through 9, and we'll read those and get right into those. Therefore, my beloved and longed-for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore Euodia and I implore Syntyche, to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who are labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be named let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you learned and received, and heard, and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So there's several conditional statements in here about living our life and the peace of God resting upon us. And so it isn't one of those verses, this is a popular verse that I think sometimes gets taken out of context uh, when we talk about the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. But it is connected to our rejoicing in the Lord, letting our gentleness be known to all men and being anxious for nothing and those things that we sh- might tend to be thank- anxious for, um, taking those to the Lord, right? Um, in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, letting our request known. So it, it's, a, it's a big precondition here. A result of those things brings about the peace of God which surpasses understanding. So we see here, as, as Paul is closing his letter, he also brings the full letter to a fine point. At, at the time uh, before this point in our letter, he's calling us to remember our unity, our shared faith and fellowship in the gospel. And so he's been going so the other thing to remember too is we've been going over this letter for weeks but really this letter was was meant to either be read personally or read to a group and it really would take no more than about 10 minutes and so his punctuation here at the end when he's talking uh, to these uh, believers would, would be more profound than kind of dissecting it week over week but nonetheless uh, Paul is encouraging them to stand fast in the Lord and he was reminding them that they are his beloved that they are his crown and joy. And previously you'll remember that he emphasized being like-minded and embracing fellowship and considering others' interests over our own. And so the reason that we see this is because Euodia and Syntyche are, are there in some kind of conflict. Paul isn't specific about what that conflict is, and I think that's instructive for us because it shows a good model and practice for us when we're involved in a conflict, or as he'll say here, I mean, if we're involved in trying to resolve a conflict. 
I heard someone say once that, um, at least in principle, I've remembered it and it stuck with me, that, that if you're in conflict with somebody, another believer, get it resolved because you don't want eternity to be, you don't want eternity to be awkward. Right, and so that's kind of a funny way to look at it. But you wouldn't want to carry your conflict over into eternity with a fellow brother or sister, um, just because you're unwilling to resolve it here. Um, and so this is what Paul's driving at: the importance of of working through our conflict, the importance of of seeing resolution to what our our issues are. And so he's even asking this group of believers in Philippi to help with these two as they work it out. Whether, whether they need to hash it out or whether they need to hug it out, he's saying whatever it takes, we need to get this thing resolved. And the reason for their conflict isn't as important as reaching that resolution. So Paul referred to this, this principle in chapter 2 in verses 2 through 4 when he said, Fulfill my joy, being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So the emphasis here, I think, is is profound because the, the resolution is what's important. And restoration, rather than kind of getting into the nitty gritty details of of why the conflict arose in the first place. Because I think we as humans can get caught up in the, you know, what did so-and-so say or what did so-and-so do and what did they do to me and what did they say to me? And even if we're trying to help somebody out, we can get more lost in the details of, ooh, what did they do to you? What did they say to you? Um, and we miss the point. Unity is a big deal to God. And, and making peace, while it's not easy, it's, it's highly valued, right? Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount said... Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And he goes on further in that same chapter, chapter 5, to, to give instruction on us. We are to take the initiative in that conflict resolution, right? So it says here in verse 23 through 25, So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Reconcile quickly with your adversary. And then it goes on. So reconciling with those with whom we are in conflict with is more important to God than our sacrifice on the altar, like our worship, those things that we would do corporately, those religious things that we would do. So he's much more concerned about unity in the body than he is receiving worship from those who are at discord, right? So Paul realizes that neither Euodia or Syntyche are taking the steps necessary to, to reconcile their differences. And so that's when he calls on these believers here in Philippi in verse 3, and I urge you also, true companion, this is the person most likely the... Um, the deacon or the one who's appointed to lead that local church is saying, hey, help these women. And, and he gives a good reason because these women have previously labored with Paul in the ministry. And so when you have people who've labored in ministry who suddenly come at odds and, and aren't re- reaching a conflict, Paul's reinforcing God's will, God's heart that says all, all the things that we might do for the sake of the gospel aren't as important as being unified in in our minds and, and reaching that resolution, right? And so... Um, when the when the physical body, right, when our physical body, when our immune system attacks and destroys healthy l- tissue, um, that's that's the definition of an autoimmune disorder, and it's highly destructive, and it can lead to to death in the most extreme cases that that are left untreated, right? And so it's the same in the body of Christ. It's, you know, his church, right? So it's important that Yodia and Syntyche resolve the issue. And it's so important that Paul's calling on other believers to help them out in there. And so, again, he's not getting into the he said, she said. Um, He's consistently calling them to reconcile for the sake of Jesus. Because ultimately, right, so we're going to look at this biblically. 
we know that whatever slight or, or hurt or deed, um, which, which all of those we can classify as sin, right? That no, no matter what the sin, Jesus paid the price on the cross for that sin, right? Wages of sin is death. We know that, that punishment uh, for our sin is certain apart from Jesus. But we know that Paul's talking to believers, right? And he's saying, you know, for, for the sake of the gospel, everyone in Philippi, turn your efforts to making sure that these two sisters in the Lord resolve their issue. And so the Bible has a lot to say about the importance of, of reconciliation. Um, and lots of books have been written on the, on the how and all of the rest. But as we close here, I think it's worth noting that no one's suggesting that you stay like in a toxic or dangerous situation or allow yourself to be repeatedly um, hurt. But what Paul is saying is, as believers, we should be, for the sake of the gospel, we could, should do all that we can to be reconciled to those that we are in conflict with. And so that begs the question, right? And you can ponder this in your own heart and have the Holy Spirit deal with you where he needs to. Is there a euodia or to your syntyche that you need to work out? Maybe you need to work it out or maybe you need to hug it out. So be blessed and ponder that issue and have a great week.